Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I miss you. Today, I am going to be reading scary stories that you guys sent me. Remember, if you would like to send me a scary story, feel free to DM me on Instagram or you can always comment it down below. También, I saw that you guys were emailing me. And if that makes it easier, I love that. Porque ya sé que a veces las historias están muy largas. And I love that too. Pero ustedes sin miedo, mándenme las historias. I have my boba here ready for these stories. I love boba, dude. Dude, it's so funny because I'm the weird one in my family that likes boba. Every time that we talk about it, they're like, esas bolas raras que masticas que le gustan a Erika. <laughs> I'm like, bro, leave me alone. Dude, I am so excited because I'm gonna go see El Tri this weekend. Well, by the time I post this video, ya va a pasar ese día, but I'm so excited. Also, guys, I am so excited because spooky season is around the corner. Like, ahora sí, dude. Ya estamos en agosto, and it's almost Libra season. Oh my god, shout out to all my Libras, because our season is coming up. It's almost my birthday too, September 23rd. And to be honest, guys, les voy a confesar algo. I have something to say that I need to get off my chest. Woo, I'm nervous, oh my god. And it's because I need your opinion. I'm about to drop the bomb. So, I was thinking about doing spooky merch, but I don't know what to do. Should I do shirts, hoodies, or cups? I need you guys to help me. But I was thinking of dropping some really cute shit, but I don't even know if I should. Like, would you guys support me? Genuinely asking, comment down below. Ah, I can't believe I just shared that. Now back to the video. I am so ready to read these scary stories. Make sure you get your snacks ready or whatever you're gonna do, get ready for today's video. Esta ocurrió en Tarimoro, Guanajuato, un lugar muy hermoso conocido por su jardín y los tianguis. Mi tía Carmen y mi tío Mario estaban allá de vacaciones, so salieron esa noche y se dirigían a Tarimoro. El camino hacia allá es pura curva y lleno de arbustos y árboles. Casi llegando había ocurrido un accidente de motocicleta. Dos muchachos y una muchacha. Ella aún seguía con vida. Tristemente, los dos muchachos fallecieron. Mi tío me dijo que la muchacha decía que tenía mucho frío y sueño. Y diez minutos falleció en sus manos. Meses después, un primo salió de compras en la tarde y escureció. Al volver a la casa, su troca empezó a fallar y al darse cuenta, se orilló a la orilla donde estaba la cruz de la muchacha. ¡Qué casualidad! Activó sus luces de emergencia y miró a sus alrededores para ver si venía otro vehículo. No había nada al respecto. Cuando volteó a donde estaba la cruz, miró que había una muchacha arrodillada en la cruz. Muy raro. A estas horas de la noche le dio poco miedo y la troca no quería prender. Miró hacia la derecha de vuelta y ahí estaba ella, sentada en el pasajero, con la ropa sangrienta y la mitad de la cara deshecha. La troca prendió y macizo se arrancó y ella ya no estaba, desapareció así no más. Hasta este día le pregunto y dice que la imagen de su cutis no se le puede olvidar. Any stories that have to do with road trips, the car, hitchhikers, etc. La verdad me dan un chingo de miedo. Y chale, pobrecito de tu primo, porque qué pinche trauma, la neta. And that's super sad for the girl too. Hopefully her spirit is able to rest in peace. I want to start by saying I've been watching you since 2015. I love your videos. Oh, thank you. 
So ever since I was a kid, I always had paranormal experiences slash encounters. For background, I lived in a house in San Diego. So many paranormal things would happen there. But what happened to me when I was 19 burned into my memory. Whenever I have a nightmare and see an evil spirit slash demon in it, I would feel this fear from the top of my head all the way to my feet. Keep that in mind. So one day my family was asleep and I couldn't fall asleep at all. It was 3 a.m. and I just felt like someone was in my room watching me. I tried brushing it off by saying it's just my mind playing games with me. So I got up to use the restroom and forced myself to sleep. The bathroom is right next to my room and my parents' room is across from it. So as I'm stepping out of my room, I turn left and see someone standing in front of my parents' room staring at me. My next reaction was no chingues, ya se metieron a robar. But as I'm looking at this being, I could see it had no eyes, no nose, just a very long line where the mouth should be. Its arms were so long they reached its legs. It had on a brown gown and as soon as I saw it, clearly I knew it was a demon. I felt fear from the top of my head all the way to my feet. I wanted to scream from the top of my lungs, but I was so scared nothing came out. I could only step back and I turned on the light in the hallway. I went rushing to get my dog and as I'm stepping into the living room, I felt a heavy slash evil presence looking at me. Then as I'm sitting with my dog, I start to pray and maybe God himself woke my parents up. I told them what I saw and they got goosebumps all over their body as I was explaining what I saw. After that, I never saw that creature again, but it was TBH one of the many scary things that happened to me. Below is an image of how the demon kind of looked like. I'm gonna put the image here so you guys can get an idea. That sounds very similar to something that happened to my mom when we lived in the house in Bell Gardens. She was asleep and she woke up and she saw a demon coming out of the heater. You know how like some of the houses in LA have those long heaters? Well, it was coming out of there. My dad se paró en chinga and he started looking all over the house because él también pensó, chale, ¿qué tal si se metieron a robar? Pero no había nada. I think the day after that, they put agua bendita en la casa. Something like that. I don't really remember. But I just remember that the day after, it felt so weird. My mom was like, no, I saw that. Like, she swears that she saw that. Also, I have seen the comments that you guys want my parents to come on my channel for spooky season. Y les voy a decir, a ver si se animan. But hopefully they do. It's because, dude, my parents work, so they be tired as fuck. But hopefully they do come on my channel. So if anything, comment below so they can see para que se animen. My grandma siempre me ha contado que en la casa siempre escucha a niños corriendo, o riéndose, o hablando. Pero nunca ha sido que le dan miedo o nada. Una noche, toda mi familia se vino a quedar a la casa de mis abuelos, donde vivo yo. Entonces, mi mamá se quedó en mi cuarto, junto también con mis hermanos, y en total éramos siete en el cuarto. Mis tres hermanos en el piso, y yo y mi mamá y mi hermanita en la cama. Eran como las doce y media, y mi mamá ya se quería dormir, pero mis hermanos estaban hable y hable, y no se querían dormir. Mi mamá, tratando de espantarlos, les dijo, si no se callan, les van a jalar las patas. Y se callaron y se durmieron. Como de eso, a las tres y algo, mi hermano me despertó llorando, de miedo, diciendo que una muñeca entró al cuarto. Yo no le creí, pero volteé hacia la puerta y vi algo parado ahí. Desperté a mi mamá y ella también lo vio. Y ahí estábamos todos culiados del miedo, porque no sabíamos qué hacer. Y luego para chingar la situación, la muñeca empezó a caminar hacia los pies. 
hacia los pies de mis hermanos. Cuando mi mamá prendió la luz del teléfono, no había nada. Pero la siguiente mañana que despertamos, notamos que la puerta del closet del pasillo estaba media abierta. Y cuando mi mamá la abrió, ahí estaba la muñeca de quinceañera y estaba caída de lado. Cuando la agarró mi mamá, se dio cuenta que se parecía a lo que vimos en la noche. So we believe that a little kid grabbed the muñeca wanting to play with my siblings since they didn't want to go to sleep. To be honest, that makes so much sense because your grandma decía que escuchaba niños corriendo. Either that or let me find out that the quinceañera doll is haunted. Another thought that I had was that it could possibly be a duende. Because duendes look like muñecas, no? Como todos chiquitos. Hey Erica, I recently started watching your YouTube videos and I've became obsessed. Oh, thank you. But I do have to tell you a scary story. Tu cuéntame. So this happened to me like 13 years ago in Mexico. My abuelita has a house in Mexico, so when I was little, me, my mom, sister, and grandma would literally be there every summer. But there was always this very unsettling feeling being in that house, especially at night. It's a whole different vibe. But what happened to me was during the daytime. A veces pienso que estas cosas nomás pasan en la noche. And then I hear stories that some crazy ass shit be happening during the day. I'm like, we are not safe, dude. One afternoon, I was inside the house eating cereal. While mi abuelita's sister and mom We're outside sitting and just talking to every señora or señor that'll pass by. I swear, they know everybody. Dude, yeah, así es en México. Todos se saludan. O si alguien pasa de lejos, they have to say hi. I'm always like, uh, do I say hi? <laughs> But all of a sudden, as I'm eating my cereal, I started to hear weird noises upstairs and I stopped eating to just listen. And all of a sudden, picture frames fell. And I kid you not, Erica, I heard hooves running. Como si fueran de chivo. And to this day, I believe that el diablo was trying to scare me. I honestly got up and ran outside and was too scared to go alone back inside. There was this time too at night where all of a sudden I heard a lechuza by the window of the room where my mom and I used to sleep in. And I turned to look at my mom and I saw a weird looking hand coming out under the bed reaching for her. But it pulled away once I saw I was looking at it. But I did go back to visit every summer because I was little and mi mamá a huevo would make me go even though I told her everything I experienced. But I'm 23 and it's been eight years that I haven't gone and I absolutely would never step foot into that house. Especially now that I have a daughter. Something very evil is in that house. There's a few more stories that I have from being in that house, but my sister went last year. And she said she saw a niña standing outside of the restroom in the middle of the night. I swear, houses in Mexico are just built different. Like, ¿de dónde sale tanta cosa? I have a story, it's kind of short, but still gets me every time I think of it. When me and my sister were younger, we had rooms that connected through a bathroom and closet. I would sleep on the furthest side of the house and it was part of the house that was built first. One day, my sister was getting ready to shower and I was in my room trying to sleep. When I was laying in my bed, I heard this voice that sounded like an old man saying hello. And I jumped up but didn't think anything because I was tired. My sister usually kept the doors unlocked when she was showering. 
Also, our curtains had a liner that was somewhat see-through. She got in the shower and I was already sleeping. She says that when she was rubbing the shampoo from her eyes and she turned around, she saw a man standing behind the liner curtains, staring at her with an old hat. That night, I heard her yell for me, asking if I was playing with her. And since that night, we have always been spooked by the littlest things. A while later, one of the old owners came to visit the house. As they were the ones who built the side of the house, me and my sister stayed in. The daughter told us the story of how her father, who was old, passed away in my room and was wondering if we ever heard something. We would only hear footsteps, but I don't think he ever terrorized us or anything, but that definitely made me a believer. Entonces, yo creo era su papá. Dude, the fact that he was behind the shower curtain, that just unlocked a new fear. Imagínate que te estés bañando bien a gusto, and then you just see a viejo standing there. I'd be buying drinks and ni me las acabo. I get full fast, dude. I got jasmine milk tea this time from Seven Leaves. I usually get the matcha, and the coffee is so bomb too. But thanks to the coffee from Seven Leaves, por eso casi me cagué at the nail shop that one time. Ese café, aguas. Alright guys, so this is it for today's video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Turn on your notifications so you can get notified for the next time I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!